Good afternoon. Welcome. <laughs> Will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hello. 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 For the others, <laughs> we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, so, my name is uh, Didier Jeanneret. I'm leading the infrastructure uh, team at global level uh, at UCB. And my name is Ralf Schepke. I'm responsible for the communication systems at UCB. Uh, the agenda, we will talk a little bit about the, the company because I think that it's important to, to look and to understand the, the mindset of the company, the strategy, where we go, what we want to, to achieve, and then see how we bring link in, uh, in this environment. And maybe, maybe uh, well, if you have questions, please ask them directly. Yes. Well, we are just a couple of uh, uh, people, so we can do that uh, interactively. I think that's... Uh, we can make it completely interactive. Yes. I like the couple of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the company, we, what you, you have to know is that we, we have moved uh, five years ago, we have started the transformation of the company moving from a, a pharma, uh, pharmaceutical company to a biopharmaceutical one uh, with major impact in terms of organization, major impact on the, on the plan, major impact also on the, at the research level. Uh, and that's important to, to know also. Yes, so we are a mid-sized company, uh, but on the top 100 at the biopharmaceutical uh, level, 9,000 people uh, in more than uh, 35 countries. Uh, it's important also looking at what will come regarding, uh, regarding LINK. Uh, something that is very important is this one. Uh, it's quite rare. We, we spend more than 25% in uh, research and development. Uh, which is a lot. Again, this is important because you will see later on that uh, Link as a part is part also of the of the game. Uh, in terms of dispersion, we are everywhere. Uh, we have a good split between the US and uh, and Europe, and we start to increase and to deploy uh, some uh, offices in uh, in Asia Pacific. Our product, uh, you probably do not know UCB. Uh, I hope that you do not know those products because <laughs> they are focusing on, on severe disease. But uh, UCB is well known with the, the product that we market 
for the last 10 years. It's uh, Zyrtec and, uh, and Kefra. Zyrtec is really well known. It was part of the pharmaceutical environment, of course, now that you are focusing on severe disease. On niche uh, one, we are targeting more hospital uh, than the, the public. The link journey at, uh, at UCB. Well, when did we start? Uh, in end of 2010, uh, we have decided, the management of UCB has decided to go for a smarter way uh, program, meaning that it was a kind of mini revolution in, uh, in the company, moving, having this transformation from pharma to biopharma, being more uh, agile, being more flexible, talking and uh, growing the collaboration with the university, with uh, the doctors, with specialists, uh, with experts. So we have to, to go out and we had to find a way to, to manage uh, our environment, our project uh, differently. Uh, of course, Smarter Way was not only about Link. There are a lot of uh, initiatives that have been started to reduce travel, uh, manage projects differently, uh, simplify the, and streamlining of a lot of processes within the company. At the end of the day, the objective was really to go for better collaboration better management of, of project at all level, but also make some savings to make sure that we can still invest the 25% in research, which is, which was the, the objective, sorry. An important part of uh, the, the project was about change management and communication. Before starting Ling, uh, we had some, uh, we did not have uh, instant messaging uh, system, we had emails phone, but I would say stupid phone. Uh, in terms of video conferencing, we were quite at the end of uh, our uh, infrastructure in terms of life cycle, so very old environment, different technology, so it was quite a, a, a nightmare and not used anymore. So we had to focus on the technology, the back end for, for Link. We had also a, a strong focus on the device that you have to deliver to your uh, end, end user. And uh, we, we focus then on the communication aspect and, uh, and the change management. For the change management, uh, one of our colleagues has a brilliant idea. We have associated the, the, the link implementation to the Tour de France, meaning that you have the winner of the day, you have the winner of the tour, you have the, the best member, uh, all that stuff. So we went for the best team in terms of usage of Fling. We, were, we went for the best site in terms of usage of, of Fling. Uh, we did some recognition to newcomer, uh, changing the way that uh, we were managing that at UCB. And this has been supported by the, at the XCOM level and the, and the C level. So it was really a bottom down support to, for this implementation. What we did also is that we, we were convinced that to have a major impact and a positive impact, we had to release quite the 9,000 people in, a, in one shot. Uh, so we did not took years to, to do it. We had the first pilot with, uh, I think it was 500? We started, with, uh, we started initially with IT, 150, and then we and went grow. to 1,500, and, and from then there, full rollout. Full rollout. Uh, to make sure that people start to, to work differently one shot. So that was the, the tour de link. Uh, another one that is also a, in, interesting, we, we set up a, a ticket, a fly for, for link that we have distributed to again. Well, to, link to will not community. change um, something in my routine, but certainly for my boss. I think for me personally, I'm going to find a big advantage to using link and I think I'm going to share that with my colleagues and all my team. It will make things a little bit more uh, efficient and a little bit more active also. It could definitely change the way I would be working going forward. I think it's going to improve meetings as well as improve the productivity of teams working on a global level. And people will start working enthusiastically and will be starting working as a one team on a one project for one UCB. It's a more true, real, and honest way of communication.
It was a wow effect. More and more people are using it. It's really intuitive. Very easy. It becomes part of day-to-day -day life. So everybody get a flying ticket for, for Link and we started and uh, again the user adoption was there, I would say after one month it was at 100%, uh, unbelievable and it's still there. Uh, people are using Link every day for everything from IM to one-to-one uh, -one for video, everything. It's, I think that it's even more than, uh, than Exchange today, <laughs> it's even more critical than Exchange. Sorry. Uh, and this is the, the result, uh, which is nice. Uh, our CEO is not calling anymore for a conference uh, internal to, to present stuff. He's calling for link call. Uh, so it's part of our gene now, which is good. Next step, the implementation part. Yes. That's <coughs> for you, Hans. Thank you. Um, maybe to, to add, um, in regards to change management, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm a dyno, an IT dyno. Uh, we did it really differently with, with Link. So in the past, IT developed solutions, installed that, spread that, rolled it out to end users, and uh, well, we said, okay, job done. We left the scene. With Link, we really did it completely differently. So you, you mentioned that we had three teams, a technical team, a change management team, and the communications team. And well, what, what you just showed was all part of it. Videos, blogs, posters, intranet. Um, that was quite exciting. And I've never seen that in my IT career before. And I think the, the, the reason for success is really that uh, the XCOM, the highest senior people of the corporation were supporting that. I mean, what can you say if the CEO of the company <laughs> is using Link? Uh, you cannot say, uh, well, I don't use it, I don't like it, I go for intercom. Um, okay, the journey of, of Link at UCB. Uh, we started, uh, as Didier mentioned, in uh, um, January 2010 with, uh, with kicking this off. Uh, the technical team, they needed a couple of, a couple of months to set it up in uh, several infrastructures. Uh, we went then in uh, production in, in June 2010 with 9,000 people. So rolled it out, the clients, and uh, um, accompanied, of course, by face-to-face -face trainings, uh, by, by classroom trainings, by documentation. And there is great documentation available from Microsoft, so we did not uh, need to reinvent the wheel. Um, one month later, we implemented six uh, HTVC room systems in six main locations of UCB, uh, along with Link, but not, not Link devices. Uh, devices from Cisco Tonberg, because we we had uh, the request the old Polycom devices uh, went out of life and we need we needed um, video conferencing solutions that were able as well to communicate outside of UCB. Um, then in November we started with uh, Link Mobile. The first mobile clients had had been uh, rolled out on on iPads and iPhones. We are uh, on the mobility part. We are quite Apple. Um, driven, I would say. I'll come to that later. Uh, we started in November with uh, the, the first version that was uh, IM and presence management and chef. And in 2012, we then started with enterprise voice. Um, not pure link. Here we have uh, a lot of classical legacy PBX systems like Siemens, Avaya's, uh, Cisco's, uh, Ericsson's, all these. Uh, different uh, devices, and um, the, uh, the Cisco's and the Siemens systems, IP telephony systems, we uh, interconnected then with, with Link via SIP trunk, and you see um, how, how fast we could do that. We started in February in Belgium, where uh, the UCB headquarters are with 1,500 users. Um, then we, we did that in France in June, um, smaller site. In October, we did it in the US, 1,000 people in three weeks. Um, at the end of uh, the year, we had a new release for, for Link Mobile that we then rolled out with, uh, with video capabilities, uh, call features um, in, in the mobile clients. And uh, 
last but not least, in December 2012, we did uh, the Link Enterprise Voice in Japan for about um, 100 users. In between, I see, we did Switzerland in August. So quite busy with telephony integration in 2012. Coming back to change management, talking about telephony, this is what we did uh, in, this in regards video, to change exciting management. exciting new features of Link will be introduced. Today you may be using Link for chat, audio, and video connections between laptops and PCs. Starting today, you can use Link to call landlines or mobile phones just by entering the number in Link. For example, you can now conduct your meetings from your PC, connecting in someone on a mobile, another from a landline, and even connecting in someone from a local Starbucks. But what if you've already started the meeting and you realize you need to ask a question to someone not on the call? That's easy. You can call that expert on their mobile and get their answer immediately. Let's say you're in an important meeting, but you also need to get to the airport to catch a flight. You can stay in the audio part of the meeting by forwarding your call to your mobile. Close your PC, jump in the taxi, and get to the airport, all while staying in the call. You can also forward your desk phone to Link. You will be able to answer your calls while working from home, working in a hotel, or even when connected at the airport. When possible, use Link to make your international calls. In most countries, calling via Link will save us money, as we will be charged only at the local calling rates. For more information, go to the Link page on UCB Plaza. That's quite funny uh, because, uh, well, Fortunately or unfortunately, our users uh, make use of mobile devices, and uh, now we have to live <laughs> with the consequences. Uh, normal users don't really understand what it means to use uh, a cell phone or a link mobile in a hotel or in a Starbucks where you don't have really the necessary performance, and then, of course, they come back to us and complain, link is not working. So uh, we have, again, to start now change management and we learned uh, quite some, uh, we had some interesting yeah. meetings here uh, where we learned what we can do and we'll restart now the communication towards the users to make them aware that, uh, well, link anywhere is not really link anywhere. So we have to be a bit careful here. But it's interesting, people are really using their mobile devices wherever, where, wherever they are. In 2013, last year, um, that was, as you can see again, a very, very busy day. Um, Microsoft announced Link 2013 in January 2013, and um, one of the pain points of Link 2010 to UCB was the, uh, the Link attendant client. So we really reach out to uh, well to, to universities, to, to doctors, uh, to partners, to vendors. Uh, as well, we reach out to patients, and uh, well, the, this client was quite cumbersome. It didn't really work. It was too complicated. Um, and in Link 2013, Microsoft announced the web client. And that was a real driver for us to move fast. So you can see we, uh, we started one month after the release with uh, the pilot to migrate to Link 2013. And three months later, we went live uh, within two weeks. So we had a fully transparent migration of uh, all users, 9,000 users from Link 2010 to, to Link 2013, parallel installation. Um, and uh, we had no issues with that. In between, you see here uh, in January, large meeting support. We, we have, um, for example, when, uh, when uh, Roque d'Oliveux, he's announcing half, half year result of the cooperation or end of year result of the cooperation, he invites to um, a meeting and he invites all employees. So you can easily imagine that 250 connections are not sufficient. And in the past, we have used services like uh, WebEx or Intercall, which were quite expensive. And therefore, we, uh, we uh, implemented Link Large Meeting Support in January 2013. So now we are able to have 1,000 simultaneous connections. Um, quite interesting. It's a simple trick, technically. Um, but it's uh, well, well used at UCB. So even if there are smaller meetings, people like to use this service because they know they are sitting alone on this, on this server um, and they have better audio,
quality, better meeting experience than if they use the normal, the normal um, uh, mediation servers and then the conferencing services, uh, which they have to share with other conferences. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've had the, the, the luck to be in uh, San Diego last year on, uh, on the first link conference where Microsoft announced federation with Skype. And as you can see here, as soon as they announced this federation, we implemented that, so we are federated with Skype. Honestly, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed about that because the way Microsoft did that is not really attractive to end users. But okay, that's another story. Um, we, we did, uh, we did uh, the federation with Google, with uh, XMPP, one or two months later. Um, then we started uh, enterprise, enterprise uh, unified messaging um, because we were aiming at replacing legacy telephony systems with pure link telephony. And then it definitely makes sense uh, to connect that directly with voicemail functionalities and, and things like that. So we implemented uh, Exchange Unified Messaging. And um, in November, we had our first installation um, in Breda in a very small site with pure link telephony audio codes. 15 users as a, let's say, as a proof of concept site. Um, <coughs> installation was uh, pretty straightforward. We did that uh, in a week training for the users, uh, all no problems. And uh, when doing that, we, we in the meantime try um, to get rid of the, the, the handsets. So we try to give users, well, they have still the choice to get a handset, but we try to motivate them to only use a headset. So they have the choice, headset wired or wireless, and if they insist, they can still have a telephone. Um, interesting, in Breda, small site, we only have one telephone which is at the reception uh, NIST, no more. We did uh, the second installation in Australia, a little bit bigger, 50 users there. Um, we did that in January, mid-January, um, and there we have no telephone. So they all went away from the classical handset uh, using headsets, and uh, for the next rollout, which starts on Monday, it will be the first bigger site in Slough with 850 um, users. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what their choice will be. Um, this large, large meeting support has been migrated to Link 2013 in October, and uh, well, it was a pretty busy year, I would say. Uh, now we are in 2014. You see that uh, uh, we, uh, I spoke already about Australia. Um, you probably have all seen the, 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 the Link Room systems that have been announced last year on the first conference. We, uh, we have a proof of concept running since January with uh, um, two of our major sites. Um, and to avoid the same mistake we made in 2011 with the HDVC systems that are not well appreciated and not well used by our users, we now do an end user test. So the proof of concept is not with IT freaks, but it's with uh, normal users. In, uh, in two research sites of UCB. Um, we'll, we are currently collecting information from, uh, from the end users to see if they are happy with that, if that is usable now. Um, and uh, if that is the case, we will go for such a solution in, uh, in many more sites then. Uh, but I'm quite confident because it's the first time one can make use of the whiteboard functionality in Link. So that's at least our experience. It has never been used before. But there, it starts to make sense. And for collaboration, it's, uh, it's definitely something interesting. Um, one of the pain points I learned we all have is quality issues with, uh, with, with calls, audio issues. And that's why you see here, we are currently doing a network assessment together with, uh, with Microsoft, with IKEA. Um, and that starts, the shipment has been done. At, uh, it will start ne next week, Monday. Uh, to see if our network is being set up correctly or if we have issues with whatever quality of service uh, configuration. Um, so we'll, we'll try to, to make our network um, as, as, uh, as good as possible. Um, 
throughout the year, we will um, we'll work on the, the, uh, the next sites to replace uh, legacy systems. So you see here in Belgium, that uh, will be done between April and probably July, August. It's really, it's a, it's a big implementation, uh, which will take a lot of time. And um, then we uh, come to unified uh, contact center, um, something we need anyway for the reception desk, uh, for bus admin functionality in the telephony piece. And um, we, uh, we selected um, a solution for that, testing that now in the, in the first three sites. And uh, if that goes well, and we are quite confident here, we will use that uh, for our global UCB help desk as well, as well as uh, things like HR answers, where, I mean, teams are working together and uh, are routing calls. Uh, so that is uh, the plan for this year. Um, and moving forward, we decided uh, for, for all sites that need new telephony systems to use uh, link telephony um, and no longer Cisco or Siemens. So that is our new standard now, link telephony. Federation, something really nice and interesting. I think one of the most exciting features of Link, I would say. Um, what are the benefits for UCB? Uh, it's quite easy. Uh, it, it, it live in real time shows you the availability of uh, colleagues uh, you are federated with. You have a sample here. It's uh, one of the Microsoft colleagues in Belgium we work, work with. Uh, he's one of the, the, the Link gurus. So you can instantly see if he's available or not. You can start instant communication with uh, federated partners. Um, and depending on the setup, you can not only see if somebody is available, you can see where he's located. You can see what his uh, responsibilities are. Um, that is quite nice and uh, intuitively to use. Um, and uh, well, it's, as I said, as Didier said already, uh, using Link saves Time saves uh, costs because we do not need to travel uh, all the time. I mean, travel is still necessary, but uh, it's, it's becoming less and less. Just to give you uh, an idea about uh, cross-organization link federation we do, um, that is how it looks like in, uh, in the link setup. Uh, probably you, you all know that. Currently, we have about uh, 40 federations with universities, with, uh, with partners, with vendors. I wiped some out, but uh, you see uh, uh, OnePlex, that's uh, one of our um, IT partners, Dualutions, HP, Microsoft, so we are federated with quite a lot of companies. Here you can see how that looks like in, uh, in live. I guess you all know that, but uh, yeah, so people are offline or they are busy, uh, so you can instantly see I can go talk to them or I better don't do that. Then we have uh, Skype Federation, just so you have seen that. Um, if somebody is uh, connected to Skype, you can add them in your, in your favorite lists, start chatting with them, you can place an audio call. Um, if you have the Federation up and running and your, um, your partner knows how to log into Skype correctly, then as of, I don't know, June or so, we can place video calls as well. So it's really a nice feature. Um, but I, I doubt it's heavily used because it's too cumbersome. Uh, we were expecting that we, we uh, would be able to reach out to thousands of, of people out there in the world. Still, it's, it's not flying. It's not flying. And then we have uh, Google Talk, which is nice. But uh, I mean, the service has been uh, canceled by, by Google in the meantime. So you can still use it. It's chat functionality but it will die. They, they do uh, now, what is it called, Hangouts. Uh, it will, so this, this will die. But XMPP you can do with, uh, with, with Cisco and there are other uh, companies offering this. This is uh, just to show you um, uh, the linked room systems that we implemented. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see uh, our research um, uh, site in, uh, in Plow, the installation, and on the right-hand side, in Bren. Some figures for you. On this, on this slide, you, you see uh, the usage of Link from, from the beginning, 12 months from the beginning. So we started in March 11. 
to see exactly one year. Um, the, blue, the blue graph, the, the blue line is the peer-to-peer -peer audio calls. The yellow one is the conferences that we are running at UCB. The red line is the video calls. Quite interesting, video is flat. So you have people, they like video, but it seems to be not really a must. It's, it's flat, and it's, by the way, you see in other slides, it's remained flat till today. Um, cumulated, we had 60,000 sessions after one year. In uh, 2000, January 2014, we, in the meantime, have 28,000 conferences in link. So you sum that up, that means 350,000 conferences per year we do in link in the meantime. I now come to the slide where we see a little bit about cost, about savings. You will see the same timeline um, about what we were using before. This is the graph for Genesis Intercall. So you can see that uh, um, it is divided into uh, Americas, Europe, and Asia. And you see, if you sum this up, we had about 110,000 it is euro cost for Genesis, Genesis Intercall per month. And with implementation of Link, it dropped down to roughly, at that time, roughly 20,000. In the meantime, we have 10,000 euro cost for Genesis Intercall. So we save 100,000, a bit more than 100,000 euro just by using Link conferencing services per month. So more than a million per year, I mentioned here, saving 100K per month. That's quite impressive. That is the long-term statistics. Um, do not need to go into details. Video is flat, so no change, but for the peer-to-peer -peer audio, oops, for the peer-to-peer -peer audio, see is still, it is still growing. We reach 90,000 peer-to-peer audio calls per month in the meantime, and interesting here as well, the conferencing is still growing as well. This is instant messages. <laughs> it's uh, kind of stupid, but we have about two to two and a half million instant messages per month. In the meantime, link is, is common at UCB. People go mad if it doesn't work. It's really incredible. So downtime, no chance. So if we need to make maintenance, people call. You have to postpone. We need that. We work over the weekend. It's, it's a must. It, and it's a problem. If, if we have an issue, uh, we have a lot of angry customers. A little bit about link user adoption of UCB. What you can see here is uh, one of these wonderful HDBC systems. And they are wonderful. Wonderful quality, really wonderful systems. We had a big uh, event to market that, to show that to our customers, uh, to promote it. So that's uh, from the day we promoted it. And the same room you see now looks like this. And you see what's on the table. So at UCB, people walk in a meeting room. They expect the meeting room to be link enabled. If there is no link, they don't use it. So wonderful device. We use it in the meantime as a television to project um, PC data, uh, to, to use it as a, a beamer. If you're interested, for sale. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pity, um, but that's, that's the case. And it's not us. I, I found that by accident. Uh, I walked around when we did the, um, the installation for the link room systems, and I saw I was really astonished, but that's user. User are creative, and they bring it in. Um, a little bit about link on mobile device. This is uh, a figure from, I don't know, one or two weeks ago. So we have today 3,100 uh, users link mobile enabled. Um, why is that? So we do not. Uh, enable link mobility for everybody. So people have to request that for security reasons. They have to sign a little, a little document, and they have to make sure that uh, 
the security settings are correct and password and, and, and things like that. So they have to request this. Otherwise, the number would be bigger because we have more mobile devices. Um, and as I said, people use that. This is a Windows 8 tablet and it's a real meeting. This is an iPad and this is even stupid, but it's an iPhone. Yeah, and people are really using this. We recently launched a new SharePoint site. Uh, this looks a little this, uh, it looks a little bit different. I um, I uh, arranged that uh, to, to have the information on this page, so you, you can see what devices uh, we have currently at UCB. Um, if you sum that up, it's uh, eight and a half thousand mobile devices. Some some users have two devices, but roughly we have uh, a bit more than four thousand iPads out there, especially for uh, for sales reps. Um, for mobile users, and uh, especially here in the US, um, all colleagues have iPhones. Um, that is going to change in Europe, but uh, here it's cheaper than in Europe, so we were, we were hesitating to take this decision, but uh, since we have issues now with BlackBerry, uh, we, we took the decision, and yeah. people can now switch to uh, an iPhone or an Android device. And you see uh, really impressive figures, and left hand and right hand side it's quite interesting we uh, we use as an mdm system we use airwatch and with this tool you can see what people use on their ipads and iphones and uh, this is for the ipad so you see which applications are used on the device so link is position three uh, airwatch is a must otherwise it's when you enroll a device you, you need to have this tool Link is on position three, and well, yeah, then you see things like Angry Birds, and uh, the first other UCB application is on position seven, and here it's even worse. Yeah? Link is on position three, and there is no more UCB application on the device. And we are proud that we are. Uh, on position three and see that it's been used by and accepted by our customers. And that's it. So, questions? But you can. Um, you mentioned, or you had on your slide there that you use like audio codes and uh, link enterprise voice as a PBX replacement. Yes. Are you using that for survivability or for kind of a gateway to bypass the PSTN? It is, it is both. Okay. So, um, well, the systems are set up uh, to be able to, uh, to, be, to work independently. So if the WAN goes down, of course, the people in the sites can, can still use uh, their phones and the audio codes uh, makes it possible that they can even do internal local peer-to-peer -peer call in, in, and they can still chat internally. Okay. And if this device goes down, the one is up, they can still use their telephones because it will be taken over by headquarters devices. Right. So it's uh, really, well, meshed, I would say. Okay. I asked the expert. Correct, Will? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I also, you, you mentioned like it doesn't work very well at Starbucks. Are, are you talking about um, link offloading VoIP on the Wi-Fi there? Yes. Okay. So that's probably a consideration for somebody who's looking to deploy link, maybe to not use that as a use case. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really interesting because we were facing heavy issues and I was, last week I was in Atlanta, there was a winter storm. I was staying in the Hyatt Hotel. I was thinking, wow, I will have plenty of speed here. And I can show you, I had 130 megabit, uh, kilobit, not megabit, 130 kilobit. So I was not even able uh, to, to work with my Outlook. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm IT, so I understood, okay, no chance. But a normal user doesn't understand that. Right. We promote Link Anywhere. And the user thinks, okay, link anywhere is Starbucks. I, have, I can surf the internet, so I should be able to do a link call, which is not possible. So we now will go and do marketing again 
to explain our users what they can do to check maybe upfront if the capacity is, is, is there to do a link call um, from Starbucks. Probably this will not be possible. Maybe from home DSL connections, yes, but you have to make sure b beforehand um, that capacity is available. Okay. Uh, and then I guess the last question I would have is, um, so you, you started to implement Enterprise Voice and it's taken off, there's a huge adoption. Um, but you also kind of alluded to the fact that now you're having Microsoft come in and take a look at your network and see if it's scoped yeah. right and you're star starting to ramp up. So that's one of the questions I have is, I, I'm an architect, so yeah, you can support going to a, a, a some set of users and then you start hitting scalability issues you know what's what's the experience been like have you do you run into issues where your QoS cannot keep up with the bandwidth that you're actually accumulating and and you're having to buy more bandwidth or get creative so that's kind of one of the other concerns that you know so I, I'm just trying to understand how other companies so have implemented to be serious I mean we we had that all in the beginning, during the rollout, of course, you, you calculate your network. We increase the bandwidth to, to major sites up front. We, we have set up quality of service, but based on some, well, artificial figures. And uh, we learned it the hard way, unfortunately. Yeah. So you, you, for example, between Monheim, it's a big site, and, Br and, and Bren, we had uh, a quality of service configured 1.5 megabit. But in Monheim, people now with Link, they tend to, say, uh, to stay at their seat, at their desk. So they had a huge conference call in Monheim. 200 people were connecting from Monheim to this session rather than going to a meeting room. 200 times 40 kilobit is 8, mega, eight, eight megabit. Quality of service was 1.5. Yeah. The call was crap. <laughs> and uh, well, it took quite some while unt until we understood that. And we will have to work with that. And you have to carefully observe and make sure your settings are correct, your configurations are correct. Um, but people will tell you, and you will learn where it's OK and where it's not OK. Uh, rapidly. Rap <laughs> rapidly, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, really good. rapidly, because uh, yeah, we, our XCOM members, our VPs, our seniors, they use Link. And if, if they have bad experience, I mean, they call directly. They call the CIO, they call Didier myself and uh, then you have to react that's one of the reasons why why we do now um, the network assessment just to be sure that we have a good setup excellent thanks welcome Thank you. other questions please i work for a pharma company as well so okay. I'm, uh, in some of the same phases than you did you Faced any uh, issues about legal constraints because uh, in our my area currently we have a lot of constraints that, as an example, that does not allow us to enable federation. Mm -hmm. Currently, and is this something that was in consideration or that we are able to to, to com come over? Or? I better let my boss answer because yes. I don't like the legal department. Huh? They are. But that's. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we, we had some, uh, some constraints. Uh, for example, uh, the, the recording, it's uh, yeah. completely uh, forbidden. Mm -hmm. the, the track, the recording on the, the, in, the IM. Instant the messaging, you can instant save that in Outlook. in Outlook. It's not allowed. People are asking, no. you cannot, uh, fine. we cannot. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that is what uh, we, we discussed that uh, th this morning. What we, we did probably at UCB, of course, we rely on, uh, on legal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and what they, they were looking probably because the implementation is a global level is to say okay which country is the the worst case in terms of legal stuff mm. and then they put the policy uh, for uh, for everybody but those are the, the, the two only one that uh, yes we had that we had issues today, with huh? voicemail voicemail they didn't want voicemail to come into outlook but uh, after tough negotiations uh, no. we have it now but we delete voicemails after seven days okay. automatically so the exchange team, they, well, there is services running in the background, batch processors, they delete the voicemails after seven days. Otherwise, so we, no other stuff. Uh, now, when we will start to, to link with, because we are patient-centric, so CEO, uh, everybody, the XCOM, everybody is pushing to, to have a better contact, direct contact with, uh, with patients, and then there we could have some, uh, some questions. 
but in the service definition. But in regards to federation, uh, the legal department had so far no issues. Yeah, because the, my, my issue is, okay, I'm not recording, I am conversation as well internally, mm -hmm. and they expect that if we federate with an external company, they apply the same policy, which is okay. that's therefore no federation. Because usually most of the, uh, the companies are know. enabling conversation is true. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm so at, at least we may, I may be able to federate with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Then we are done. And I have learned that I shall ask you to fill in the uh, yes. Somewhere it is. The, evalu the evaluation, right? Please, if you could do that, I think Microsoft will be grateful. Thank you so much. Have Thank a you. lot of fun tonight. And uh, I think we see there again. Thank you.